Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz vibraphonist Chris Stingman on the 2022 CD, Journeys Volume 2. On this new project, he has released a deeply personal and unique musical vocabulary through his solo playing, and he's done this in recent years. And it's been years that have offered up profound challenges, both globally and personally. The album is a vivid portrait of his connection with both his instrument and his listeners. He has a great backstory on this. We delve into all of this and so much more. Enjoy this interview. Well, hey, thanks for reaching out with the new album. It's wonderful. Oh, thanks. Glad you like it. Before we get into this album, I know we've been in touch and we spoke during the pandemic, but now, not that COVID's over, but now that we're kind of emerging and, and life is opening up, yeah. how, are you, how are you doing? How did you kind of survive that? And how are you doing with, you know, you got a new album out, things are opening up a little bit. What's going on with you right now? Yeah, it's been a, well, it's just been a busy, this past calendar year has been quite busy with a lot of tours and playing out and it's been great not without its you know <laughs> frightening aspects uh like you know because it's still like you said there's not like COVID has gone away and uh but amazingly you know i've managed to like tour i have been meaning to count but it's i think i've played in more cities this year than any other year before and i managed to do it without getting COVID while touring i did get COVID at home it affected attendance a bit, uh, especially in the first half of the year. Um, definitely noticed a shift around the fall. Uh, people seemed to start feeling okay to come out. I toured California in November and had great attendance. And I was kind of afraid that it wouldn't work out that way because I kept hearing, or I, I, had, I had friends in California, so I visited before and like in 2021 and earlier in 2022 I was there just visiting and it seemed like they were still really in pandemic mode and people were still fearful to come out and you know socialize uh, but it, actually I met a bunch of people in November who were saying this is my first show that I've come to since the pandemic so I guess that was I hit it right at the right time <laughs> so for uh, sure well, you know, the, the construction of, of, of the volume one that, that I believe was last year was such a fascinating story that you did it in honor of your father who was in hospice. And I'm curious if this is an extension, this volume two, or what is kind of this backstory on this album? Yeah, I mean, it's a continuation for sure, hence the name and all that. Definitely it's part of the same series and same approach. This particular album actually feels even more for me it feels even more kind of raw and personal so it, that's something that by nature of the tracks that were chosen so you know certain things come to mind when you play things and or you have associations with them and um so that was part of it but i think you know the peace album was something that came out in 2020 with, um, for my dad that was the music i played for my dad and that was something I worked really hard on for a couple of years and crazy enough came out during a pandemic. And then I just felt the need to keep going with that approach because it had meant so much to my dad and it, it seemed to uncover a lot of possibilities for myself. I got so much great feedback about that way of playing, but it also evolved because of my own studies of Mbira music and just the way life is, I mean, especially living through a pandemic, just it's just hard to even picture what life was totally like prior, you know, even though we're kind of approximating that now, it just feels like everything's really different, including, you know, music. This music came out of, you know, a period of real soul searching during that. So that's the difference I see. It's, a, it's a more personal, I guess. Yeah. You know, both of these volumes are very sublime. They're very calming. There's a level of them that's almost meditative. And, you know, I know that there's no way you could predict the creative process and your father being sick and, and, and everything that kind of juxtaposed and came together to create this. But you almost kind of pull yourself back and look at it and think this might have been one of the best possible times for humans that were listening to music to get this music and be receptive to it? Right. Yeah. I mean, as musicians, we try to tap into what's needed, what, what we feel people need and what we need. And it, 
you know, hopefully we're relating to other humans in a way that those things are, are there's a lot of overlap, <laughs> you know, between what musicians need and what audiences need. And I do feel that a lot in my, in my own work. Uh, I do a fair amount of, I actually do a Zoom series still, um, where I talk with people who join and they share with me kind of what they're going through, what they're experiencing and, or what they're needing anything like that and uh and then i play it as a response a long form piece and that's just totally of the moment and that's another thing that's come out of this journey that's really beautiful i some i i feel it's a weird sensation back it's almost like i i'm searching for like these points of tension and finding them musically and kind of resolving them in a way or working through them is maybe a better way to put it. Yeah. And it, I think people need that a lot these days, uh, maybe more so than definitely more so than the past. And even now it's, we've all been through a collective trauma that we're still working out. You know, for me, it's been a feeling of how do I reconcile the past self of mine with the, the person who I became during the pandemic, which was, kind of a different person who did different things and like developed different habits and interests. And then all of a sudden, the, you know, things kind of reopened and the old stuff came back, but like kind of collided with the new stuff. And how, what do you choose to do? What do you choose to keep? What do you choose to let go of? Because you can't keep it all. That's a very interesting way of putting it. You know, I've been a huge fan of both of these volumes. And I just, I mean, I, I love the vibes, but I love the, the way that this is constructed. What's been kind of the feedback from you? What's been the overall sentiment from, you know, fans and people out there? What have you heard? Yeah, I've heard that. I, <laughs> I've heard some, I usually don't tend to hear the negative <laughs> feedback. So I have a biased sampling. But the things I've heard is that people like to use it to create a good vibe in their house, to calm down sometimes or to like have some peaceful time to themselves people use it a lot for journaling i think it's great for that i actually use it myself for some writing and something about this way of playing that seems to really lend itself to to that and if over the years i've had writers tell me that about my music in general my uh, young cousin who's still a kid there's sort of a generation gap in the family and She's my cousin, but she's, I think, eight years old. And she listens to the music every night before she goes to sleep. It's so sweet. I love that. Yeah, I think there's other people who, who do that, too, who are not eight years old. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the kind of feedback I'm getting. Like, usually it's... I, someone told me they play it before. Um, they use it as, like, a little moment of kind of calm before, like, starting a meeting. Just I loved that, too. Like, they had the meeting happen and they put the music on i guess that's something they do and so they're using my music for that um so all kinds of things like that as we kind of look towards the end of this year that's rapidly approaching and even into 2023 new album has come out what is the world looking like for you as we kind of open up more yeah for me you know i'm still getting a pulse on it I'm t <laughs> but in terms of what's happening, you know, where this is heading for me, it feels like like longer collaborations are starting to form. Like um, in early January, I'll be going to Florida and doing a couple concerts, and also playing at a hospital, uh, mostly for the staff of the hospital and in Orlando, and then also um, doing a like two day mini kind of writing workshop where I'll be playing for people uh, as part of the workshop. I love these kinds of collaborations and that's kind of what I'm looking to do more of uh, because it seems like that's where the music's really fitting in really nicely. Um, it works great as a concert too. There's, you know, it's a listening experience. It can be that, but it can be so many other things too. And so I'm exploring all those different facets. I mentioned the hospital and that was something I was working on kind of pre-pandemic was trying to work more with people, uh, works basically trying to collaborate with 
hospitals, hospice centers, because my dad was in hospice and we were playing him this music in that, and he felt that other people in that situation would benefit. And once the pandemic hit, all of that really shut down. Um, I was starting to make some connections in those fields, and then those people just became out of commission. They were totally tied up with pandemic-related things, helping save the world and whatnot. So anyway, uh, now it feels like there's a little more space for those collaborations again. And so I'll be playing at this hospital. I'll be doing a presentation at Mount Sinai in New York. Uh, so some med, med students um, on the experience I had with my dad and the music and how music could be used that way. So that kind of thing feels like it's more possible again. And that's, that's a good feeling. You know, the one thing we figured out over this pandemic for the musician was the best place to get albums to kind of capitalize on giving back to the musicians. So for Journeys Volume 2 and even Volume 1, where's the best place for everybody to go to pick it up and to even find out about what you're doing and, and anything revolving around your world? Yeah, absolutely. Well, my website, chrisdingman.com, and I appreciate that, Joe. And also Bandcamp is a great source uh, if you're to download, you know, to purchase a download or uh, order a, a CD or vinyl. Uh, both Journeys Volume 1 and 2 are on vinyl. Volume 2 will be available in February. And uh, Volume 1 is already out, of course. So those you can order on my website, chrisdingman.com, or on Bandcamp, which is chrisdingman.bandcamp.com. Those are the best places. Chris, hey, thank you, man. Thanks for sending the music. Um, it, it, it's perfect, especially this time of year. It's just very... Uh, soothing and sublime um, hmm. and have a happy uh, happy holiday and a great 2023 man you too yeah I wish you happy holidays you and your family and, and thanks for doing this thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in New York Los Angeles Kansas City and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz thanks to Chris for his time energy and cool want to hear more interviews go to famous interviews with joe domino in the itunes store visit neon jazz at youtube.com and for everything neon jazz go to the neon jazz.blogspot.com until next time enjoy the jazz my friends neon jazz